This is uh, Kevin Martin coming to you from the Lake Erie Regional Grape Program down in Portland, New York again. We're going to talk today about secession planning. We've done this before in the past and we're going to get into the nitty gritty a little bit and talk more in detail about one of the tools you can use to help provide uh, secession planning stability to your uh, vineyard business operation. This pertains to pretty much any business that's out there. It's not necessarily specific to vineyards. Uh, but we do know that lots and lots of businesses don't have these agreements that we're going to talk about, and vineyards are no exception. So what we want to talk about is uh, what's called a buy-sell agreement. A buy-sell agreement, if you don't know, is an agreement that results in uh, the automatic or option of a sale under the event of specific circumstances that occur in a business. So who would have a buy-sell agreement? A buy-sell agreement would be uh, should be a part of any business operation that involves more than one owner. So if a business is owned by a child and uh, a parent, or if it's owned by two partners that aren't related, it really doesn't matter. As long as there's more than two people, you'd want to have a buy-sell agreement. So why would you have a buy-sell agreement and what would they do? Um, the, the reason you have a buy-sell agreement is because when you get involved in a business that has multiple owners, uh, the idea typically is when you start that business is that you're interested in doing business with those actual people. You're not necessarily interested in doing business with or sharing ownership of your business with a bank, with a creditor, uh, with an estranged spouse, with a widow. Uh, really, the with small businesses, the people involved are really what adds a lot of the value. So if those people happen to change, the value of that business could potentially change a lot, especially to the individuals that are still involved in the business. So a buy-sell agreement um, is a plan to prevent that from happening or to decide what happens to the business when those circumstances do arise. Uh, the one thing that re is really important most of the time um, is that a buy-sell agreement needs to be developed early. If you already have a business with multiple owners, it doesn't mean that you can't have a buy-sell agreement. It just means that if the need for a buy-sell agreement arises, it's probably too late to, to provide for one. It needs to, it's something that needs to happen if it's going to have value before you actually need it. About 80% of businesses don't have buy-sell agreements, so it would not be unusual if your business does not. Buy-sell ag agreements are really not used for buying or selling businesses. They're used, as I've described them before, uh, as a plan for how a business assets change hands when a, an unfortunate event occurs. So these unfortunate events often consist of the death of a business partner, uh, the bankruptcy of a business partner, or um, sometimes depending on how the business is being run, if there is a conflict between partners, it could trigger a buy-sell agreement if that conflict rises to the level of litigation or something like that. Divorce can be a particular problem in a lot of states uh, because the, the ex-spouse may, may need to become an owner of that business or the, the partner may need to give their assets to that spouse, which results in a change of ownership. A buy-sell agreement can prevent that from happening. Uh, it offers protection both to the partner who is getting divorced and to partners who are not involved in the divorce. Uh, one of the important parts of a buy-sell agreement, in addition to spelling out when uh, those agreements would be triggered and a sale would take place, is how valuation occurs. Uh, with most vineyard businesses, the core of the value of the business is the land, uh, the machinery, and the people involved. So typically, uh, you can use a formula to determine the value of that business before, uh, before the sale takes place. Uh, sometimes you could use an expert to value the business at the time of the sale, and that's probably the best way to get full value and to leave the risk uh, of changing the value of the business to the moment that sale occurs. Uh, to protect the interests of parties that are involved in the business when the business forms, you could actually set that value ahead of time based on a formula. It could be that you anticipate land values uh, increasing by one half of 1% 1 to 1% 1 per year. 
And something like that would eliminate the risk of values changing considerably in a way that disrupts the buy-sell agreement and over leverages one owner as he suddenly has to pay for more business than he anticipated. Um, the, the other thing you can do is to force the, the new owner of the business who's being bought out, whether it's an ex-spouse or a creditor, to take payments. So a buy-sell agreement can allow for financing of the sale by the, the existing, by the, the future owner. So what that allows the, the partners to do that remain involved in the business is it allows them to, rather than um, scramble to find financing and pay $500,000 for a, for a $1 million business, they would pay uh, annually $100,000 over the course of five years or $50,000 over the course of 10 years. And in that way, before they even start the business, they know if any of these unfortunate, unforeseen circumstances happen, uh, they know that they won't necessarily need to change their leverage in the business. They they will have built-in creditors vis-a-vis uh, -vis this buy-sell agreement. They won't have to run to a bank to look for financing. The other thing a buy-sell agreement can do, especially when you have a set valuation clause, is it can change the value of the, the business for estate tax planning purposes. Um, estate tax is not a big deal in New York State anymore. It's certainly not a big deal on the federal level for 99% of all of our vineyard operations. It, it may be of interest to some Pennsylvania growers and the local and the state taxes that they're subject to. Uh, again, when you draft a buy-sell agreement, it's probably going to take an attorney and maybe some input from a, an accountant to make sure you can take advantage of these these uh, benefits that a buy-sell agreement would offer if these these things happen and a buy-sell agreement is triggered. Uh, I want to thank you for joining us today. We can talk more about succession planning later. If you have any questions, please uh, feel free to ask in the comments below, and we'd be happy to answer them. Mm -hmm.